Hey team, we're going to talk about using CSS modules with SAS and Next.js. I'm Colby Fayok, and if this is your first time here, make sure you hit subscribe for future updates. If this is your first time with Next.js, it's a React framework that allows you to quickly build websites and web apps. CSS modules are essentially a CSS file, but when they're imported into a JavaScript project, they're automatically scoped to that part of the project. For instance, we see here when we import this CSS file, we have this styles object, which is essentially a map of all the class names, which we then apply to our element. But I like to use SAS with my CSS, which is an extension of the language, which gives some extra features like variables and functions. Those variables all compile down to just standard CSS. And one of my favorite parts is that you can nest your SAS. So here we can see that we have a nav element with the unordered list, which would compile to the standard that you would actually write in CSS. Now, the cool thing, Next.js actually has a lot of built-in CSS support. It actually automatically supports CSS modules. And while it doesn't support SAS by default, we can simply add it in as a package and immediately get that support. So to get started, we're gonna spin up a new app with Create Next App. In my terminal, I'm gonna run yarn create next app, and I'm gonna call it my SAS next app. And once we're done, we can CD into that new directory, and we can run yarn dev, which will spin up our development server, which we can open up right in our browser. And once it loads, we can see our new app. So like we saw in the next docs, we can see that next already has CSS module support, like for the homepage. We're inside of the index.js file, we're importing that styles object and we're using it throughout that file. But I wanna be able to use a SCSS file, which allows me to write in SAS. So inside of my project, I'm gonna first add that SAS package. So let's run yarn add SAS. And again, once that's installed, we can spin up our development server. So now that we have SAS, the first thing we wanna do is convert our CSS module to an SCSS module. So first let's change the ending to SCSS, which as we would expect is actually breaking our app. But now if we go to our home.module.css file and we rename that to SCSS, we can see that the page loads just fine now, but we're actually not writing any SCSS right now. The cool thing is that by default, any regular CSS is going to work just fine inside of SCSS. But now instead of running these footer selectors separately, I can take this image tag and I can nest it right inside of my footer which allows me to organize things a little bit nicer. And back on my app, I can see that even if I inspect this, I can still see that that selector is getting written out by home image. Similarly, we can see that the footer also has an anchor tag. If we look in our browser, we can see the anchor tag with those styles. But just like before, let's take that selector and move it nested inside of our other footer class and the page reload and it looks just the same. So this means that my SCSS is now in full effect. So say, for example, what if I wanted to make all instances of this blue a different color, like say purple. The first thing I'm gonna do is at the top of the page, I'm gonna define a new variable and let's call it color primary and let's set it as that blue. Now, because I have that color variable available in this file, I'm gonna change that anchor tag instance to that variable. And we can see that in the app, that title link is still blue. I'm also gonna change all the other instances like on the card where it shows that color when you hover over. But now let's say I wanna change that color to my favorite color purple. So we can change that to blue, violet. And back in our app, we can see that the link in the title changed to purple. And also when we hover over our cards, we have that new color. Now this works great, but say we wanna make sure that that color is globally available or say we create a mix-in that we can use as a function throughout our different CSS files. Within SAS, we're able to import other CSS files. So for example, say I wanted to create a mix-in so that anytime I wanted to make this grid responsive or any other element, I can use a shorter syntax to make sure they're all the same. Inside of my styles directory, I'm gonna create a new file called underscore mixins, which the underscore denotes that it's a partial file where we can create a new mixin. And let's say for example purposes, we're gonna just call it desktop, where we can paste in that same exact media query rule, but instead of the class, we're gonna put content with an at symbol which means anytime we use this desktop mixin, it's going to include the content nested inside as that content. Now back inside of our home module CSS file, we can import that mixin file. And because it's a partial, we don't have to specify that underscore. And instead of this media query, we can include our desktop mixin. And back on our app, we can see that when we shrink the browser window, we can still see that it changes those styles. Because we're using SCSS, we can even nest these styles. So back in my primary grid class, I'm gonna paste in that instance of our mixin, and I can actually now get rid of that grid since we're nesting inside the top level grid. And we can see that our styles still work. Because we're nesting desktop inside of this top level grid class, 
anything that's inside of here is going to apply to the grid class name wrapped in this media query. I don't know about you, but I feel like that's much easier to manage my responsive CSS. The cool thing is now that we have SAS inside of our Next.js project, we can really apply these SAS concepts to anything. So we can create a global colors file, or if we wanted to create a grid or a card component, we can create those files and then import locally scoped CSS directly to those components. The awesome thing is just with one simple package, we're able to get the full capabilities of SAS right inside of our Next.js apps. And we can couple that with CSS modules to have some pretty powerful styles. So what do you think about SAS? What's your favorite way to include CSS in your Next.js project? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, if you like this video, make sure you hit thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. Thanks for watching.